Hello, I'm Ethan. And I'm Owen. And today we're going to be talking about earth layers and plate tectonics. First off, we have the inner core. It is the deepest and hottest layer and is also the most dense with the composition of nickel and iron. It is also about 1,200 kilometers thick. The outer core, which is the layer that surrounds the inner core, takes up about 10% of the Earth, is composed of molten metals, and creates Earth's magnetic field. Third off, we have a mantle. It is the thickest layer. Because it is less dense, it contains less dense materials like oxygen, calcium, and aluminum, and also creates the most convection currents compared to every other layer. Part of the upper mantle is the asthenosphere, which creates most of the convection currents in the mantle that move the crust. The asthenosphere is also a squishy layer that has very high pressure as well. The lithosphere, another layer, is part of the mantle and the crust. And here, the rocks are very hard and rigid. Importantly, it also contains the 15 major plates. The crust is like an outer shell to the earth. It is the thinnest and the coolest layer, and it contains the eight essential elements for life. There are two types of crust, continental crust and oceanic crust. Continental crust is much thicker than oceanic crust, but it is less dense. Oceanic crust is also much darker than continental crust and is composed mainly of basalt rocks. New ocean seafloor is often made in oceanic crust and that's the reason that it is also much younger than continental crust. structure of the crust and cause continental drift, middle ocean ridges, and other natural phenomena such as earthquakes and volcanoes. Fault lines are the lines that separate the plates like cracks in an eggshell. A conversion boundary is when two plates collide head-on with each other. There are three types of conversion boundaries based on whether the crust is oceanic or continental. One of these three types is continental crust to continental crust convergent boundary. In this boundary, mountains are created, and in some rare cases, volcanoes. An effect of this boundary is the Rocky Mountains in the U.S. Another type of convergent boundary is continental crust to oceanic crust. It produces volcanoes due to subduction, and also causes earthquakes. These earthquakes can cause tsunamis. Near-ocean trenches can also be formed at this boundary. An effect of this boundary is the Kilauea volcano in Hawaii. So, you may be wondering what subduction even is in the first place. In a convergent boundary, often the pl one plate is more dense than the other. For example, an oceanic plate is definitely more dense than a continental plate. The more dense plate will be forced down beneath the less dense plate, and once it reaches the asthenosphere, it will be turned into molten rock. This will force magma to rise up into magma chambers, producing volcanic activity. Many people don't know the difference between magma and lava. Most people think that's just the same thing, whereas they're really two semi-different substances. Magma is the molten rock beneath the Earth's surface and is actually much hotter than lava. Lava is formed from the magma that was beneath the Earth's surface when it comes up through volcanoes or fissures or cracks in the Earth's surface. Because of this, it is much cooler than magma. Subduction can also occur in our last convergent boundary, oceanic crust to oceanic crust. Subduction occurs when one of the oceanic plates is more dense than the other one and slides beneath the less dense one, just like how it would occur with a continental to oceanic convergent boundary. It often creates trenches underwater and sometimes mountains. An effect of this boundary is the Marianas Trench. 
The Marianas Trench is the deepest place below sea level on Earth. The next type of plate boundary is a transform fault boundary. Transform fault boundaries are when two plates slide by each other, often cracking and causing massive earthquakes. Earthquakes are sudden movements in the Earth's crust. A divergent boundary, our last type of boundary, is when two plates pull away from each other. On continents, when a divergent boundary occurs, rift valleys are created, such as the Great Rift Valley in Africa. When two plates diverge in the ocean, a process known as seafloor spreading occurs. When this happens, in the middle of the divergent boundary, magma will rise from the asthenosphere, creating new ocean seafloor. As other seafloor gets pushed outward, it becomes older seafloor. Seafloor spreading occurs in, in a mid-ocean ridge, such as the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Pangea is a theory that in one point in history, all seven continents were connected to form one supercontinent. Drift is the gradual movement of the continents over geological time. Continental drift was caused by a massive divergent plate boundary which split up Pangaea. One piece of evidence of Pangaea is that similar if not identical plant, plant or animal fossils have been found on multiple continents. An example of this is that a tropical fern fossil that could have only grown in a tropical climate was found in, in Antarctica. This shows that Antarctica used to be closer to the equator. Another one of these pieces of evidence is similar rock strata. This is the similar texture of rocks and cliffs on different continents. The next piece of evidence is similar continental shape. Many continents seem to fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. Have you ever noticed how South America and Africa seem to fit together? Erosion deposits are when glaciers pick up rock particles and other materials and deposit them in a different place. Glacial till is what erosional deposits leave behind, such as rocks or rock particles. Striations, or scratches left in rocks and other materials, were similar on different continents that used to fit together. Part of this video because they affect different natural events that occur based off of the plate tectonics and the layers of the earth. First type of rock is a sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rocks are formed when rocks are piled upon each other creating pressure. This pressure forms layers called strata which are often found in cliffs. Sedimentary rocks are mostly found in bodies of water. Because of this they have many fossils in them. Metamorphic rocks are rocks that have been changed in long periods of time due to heat and pressure. These types of rocks can be formed deep under Earth's surface from the heat caused by the asthenosphere and the collisions and friction of tectonic plates. Examples of this rock include quartz, marble, and slate. The last type of rock is an igneous rock. It is formed by lava cooling on the Earth's surface or magma cooling inside the Earth. Examples of this rock are pumice, obsidian, basalt, and diorite. A fun fact is that 95% of the Earth's upper crust is igneous rock. The rock cycle is the cycle in which rocks are changed from one rock to another rock. For example, a sedimentary rock changes into a metamorphic rock, which changes into an igneous rock, and changes back to a sedimentary rock, and so on. First, sedimentary rocks sink into the asthenosphere, where they are then changed to, into metamorphic rocks due to extreme heat and pressure. Because of this, they are then melted into magma. Next, convection currents from the asthenosphere cause the less dense magma to rise. Since the magma has high viscosity, gas gets trapped inside of it, causing it to explode out of Earth's crust through volcanoes or fissures on the Earth's surface. As the lava on the Earth's surface cools, it becomes igneous rock. 
Then over time, as minerals and rocks get piled upon it, it becomes another sedimentary rock. Cycle repeats. I'm Ethan. And I'm Owen. And we hope you enjoyed our video on plate tectonics and earth layers. Another one of these pieces of evidence. Yo, you've a second. Ah! <laughs> Structure the crust and cause is continental crust to continent. Stop it. The boundary is oh. This part of the upper mantle.